question is, what's the next logical step for computer graphics? And I will claim that computer graphics will focus on both input and output devices, but particularly on going from representations, computer models, and data abstractions to the real world. So right now we have this huge gap. We can convert real world to extremely ma precise mathematical uh, models, computer models. However, there's really no way to go back to translate these, these computer models back to reality. So for example, I can measure any type of material with a digital camera and other devices, but, but there's really no way to, uh, to recreate a new material with desired mathematical properties. The second very important observation about this graph is working towards the closed loop. So in this closed loop, we can go back and forth between the real world and the virtual world, between computer models. And working towards this closed loop will drive the progress in computer graphics. It will reduce the time and cost, and it will provide us the means to iterate between the real world and, real, uh, and representations and computer simulations. In the process, we'll be able to improve the, real, uh, the input devices, output devices, and underlying data abstractions. And in fact, a number of these uh, pipelines exist, so I'm going to show you a few of those. So shape capture, modeling, and fabrication is a very good example of, of this type of closed pipeline. We can capture pretty much any 3D geometry of using a 3D scanner, and then we can create a 3D model edit this model if necessary, and finally, we can fabricate this edited model using a 3D printer. A similar pipeline can be used for motion capture, modeling, and robotics. So where we capture a large database of human motions, and then we build a data-driven model, which we are able to edit if necessary, and then this in turn can help us in designing data-driven controllers for humanoid robots. Another example is light field capture, modeling, and display. So in this case, we are able to use a camera array to capture a dynamic scene. Then we can represent this scene using a light field representation. We can edit this representation if necessary. And finally, we can recreate this scene in a similar format using an autostroscopic display. And the Fourth area, perhaps the one, the fourth example that I'm probably the most interested in is appearance capture, modeling, and fabrication. So in this case, we are able to measure appearance of any material, and then we can build a data-driven model for, for this uh, material. And finally, we can use printers and other output devices to manufacture surfaces with desired material properties. So when trying to manufacture a physical comp a equivalent of a computer model, we are faced with a one very important challenge. Typically, our data abstractions cover much bigger space than device capabilities of a given device, that output device that we have. And this is because the data abstraction really doesn't have to conform to physical constraints. And the main task of an output mapping algorithm is to remap model to output device capabilities. And typically, this is going to be a very challenging problem because these spaces can be nonlinear and can be really high dimensional. So in computer graphics, we have already seen a number of these uh, uh, examples and we have developed algorithms for output ma mapping. So we have developed output mapping algorithms to map color to the capabilities of a given output device to a given printer. Tone mapping up operators map high dynamic range images to low dynamic range displays. And image retargeting uh, algorithms that we have seen recently remap high resolution images to capabilities of displaced devices with lower resolution. So in, in the future, output devices will be much more general. So for example, they will be able to fabricate a variety of different materials. 
Therefore, we'll need to develop output mapping algorithms for different types of phenomena. For example, reflectance, scattering, deformation, motion, and this is just to name a few. And I can think at least about two rules when designing these types of uh, output mapping algorithms. First, we have to really think about the metric in which we use to squish the space. So we shouldn't really use it linearly. Probably we should use a perceptually motivated metrics to squish this, this uh, space to map it to the device capabilities of a given device. Second important part that we have observed is, is that when we squish the space, this, the squishing has to be local rather than global. And this will allow us to preserve much more in information in a given data set. So one prime example here would be local versus global tone mapping operators. So how will future output devices look like? I think that your future personal fabricator will have a set of materials with known measured properties and it will assemble the best approximation of the computer model from tiny pieces of these base materials with known properties. And the main variable that you will have is the resolution of the pieces and the number of different uh, materials that you have in the printer. And I think that personalized fabrication will change the way in, the way in which we create and manufacture everyday goods. So for example, I think that design will be the most vi valuable while the fabrication and will be instant, it will be a commodity. And this device will probably start as something specialized, for example, closed fabricator, but progressively they will become more and more general. And of course the capabilities of these devices will be steadily increasing, have, however we'll have to wait quite a bit to get a starter replicator or T1000 terminator. But I really believe that computer graphics will play a very important role in designing output mapping algorithms. So I think in order to, uh, uh, to, take, advantage, to take, full, take full advantage of a given uh, device, you really have to design proper uh, algorithm for that. And, and that's where computer graphics will play a very important role. So in this talk, I have argued that computer graphics will focus on both input and output devices, and this will finally allow us to close the loop and bridge the gap to the reality. And I, I think that many instances of these pipelines will be created in near future. And this fundamental process that you see has the following three implications. So first, we'll have tight connection, tight connection, tighter than ever between virtual and real world, Second, it will force us to build compact and easy to use output, input and output devices that operate in real world environments. And finally, as a consequence of the first two, it will automatically have the, will have auto automatically the opportunity to bring these technologies outside of the lab to a larger population of people. So I would like to close with my vision of, for the future of computer graphics and interactive techniques. In short, I believe that the future of computer graphics and interactive techniques lies in novel input and output devices that operate in real world environments and are accessible to everyone. So that's it, thank you.